ambiguous. So it said something that's only slightly negative if it was meant for negative. So then it could be said, even though it's ambiguous, if it's said in a way which implies it's said with the tone or the gesture and the gesture that implies that you don't mean the negative. So the Chavetz Chaim says, and then it's mutar. And that's built on a Gemara according to Tosfot's explanation. So the Chavetz Chaim says, however, if the statement you're saying uh, pertains to someone who, who you know is very, um, a very pessimistic person, or it's a situation where he's just, you're not in good terms with him, and he's just looking, if he hears anything which sounds something remotely similar to something that sounds like that's against him, he's going to take it the wrong way, so then it doesn't help to say it in a way with the, with the tone the, uh, that, that implies that you don't mean negative, because since at the end of the day it's an ambiguous statement, and that person's mind is prejudiced, so he's going to take it to the negative because you could explain it negative. So like the famous example that the Gemara brings, that uh, you know, to say that there's always food cooking in that person's house, which could either mean because he's always eating, or it can mean because he has a big family, so he has to have a lot of food prepared. Or he has guests, he's always having guests. So even if you say it in a tone which sounds that you mean for the positive, but if it's about a person who's prejudiced, either the situation makes him prejudiced or because that's his nature, and he's, he's going to look, he's, so to speak, looking to, to the negative, so then it's not mutar, because since there's room to take it for the negative, it won't help the slight gesture or the tone that implies the positive, and it'll take it for the negative.